Austrālijas abergēniem ir vairāk kā 50 tūkstoši gadu senas tradīcijas, kuras sastopams arī zināšanas par sauli, mēnesi un zvaigznēm. Sancenos laikos pirms Austrālijā ieradās ieceļotāji, zvaigžņotā debes bezpilsētu gaismām un citiem traucēkļiem bija ļoti svarīga vietējo iedzīvotāja dzīves daļa. Viņiem bija savas zvaigznāja un savas teikas, piemēram par Emu Putnu debesīs. Doktors Dvēns Hamakers no Jaundienvidvalsts universitātes ir astronoms, kurš pēta tieši Austrālijas abergēnu visumu redzējumu. Šī intervija būs dzirdama angļu valodā. Why are you here? What's your story? You're from America, clearly, and you're an astronomer. So how did you end up in Australia doing Aboriginal astronomy? Well, it's kind of a good question, actually. But I think what it is, I always grew up with a fascination for the crossroads of astronomy and culture and with Australia. I mean, I, I you know, kind of grew up in the 80s with uh, Crocodile Dundee. So for us, that was kind of exotica a bit, you know. But I, I had the opportunity to come down 10 years ago as an undergraduate and went to Macquarie University in Sydney and just loved it. So I decided I wanted to move back to Australia permanently and go to grad school and do my PhD. And um, initially I came down to do astrophysics. I didn't come down to do indigenous astronomy. But um, that that draw, that that gravity, if you want to call it, of, of culture and astronomy just got too much of me. And I actually just did a master's degree in astrophysics and went to Macquarie to do a PhD in indigenous astronomy. So that really was just an absolute phenomenal time. It turned out to be one of the best choices of my life. Tell me about the emu in the sky. Oh, the emu is great. Um, the thing I love about the emu is it's, it's not a constellation of the bright stars. It's a constellation of the dark spaces in the Milky Way. And when you look at the coal sack next to the Southern Cross, it looks just like an emu's head. There's even a star right in the spot where the uh, eye would be in a little bit of a dark patch. It looks like a beak. And the dust lanes in the Milky Way trace out a beautiful shape of the neck and the body and the legs and even some eggs of the emu. So that enough is fascinating, but then it also rises at the time of the year, just after sunset, when the emus are laying their eggs. So it's just a phenomenal constellation. You find it all across Australia, and you find equivalents in South America with the Rhea or the Lama. So it really is an amazing constellation. I just, I never get tired of seeing it. And the first time I ever saw it in dark skies, it blew me away. I've never been able to see the Milky Way the same again. I hope I get to see it tonight, actually. I've never paid attention to it either. And I live in Sydney, so... Frankly, you don't get to see a lot there. So what are the other things that Aboriginal people and Indigenous people would see different in the night sky than, say, Westerners would? Well, you have a lot of examples of where specific seasons in Australia are linked to the rising or setting of particular stars or animals. I mean, obviously, you have a whole slew of amazing animals down here you don't have anywhere else. And, you know, the, the times of the year that they're... they're laying eggs or breeding or whatever, those, those coincide to the rising and setting positions of stars like Vega or Antares or the Southern Cross or the Emu. And these tie into not only the aspects of when they you know, are breeding or when the food source is ready, but the social aspect as well. And those are lots of ceremonies tied to those animals. You'll have uh, Pleiades ceremonies tied to the breeding cycle of the dingoes and the start of winter. It all relates together. So you find similar stories around the world, but, you know, obviously being in Australia, you're going to have unique stars in the sky compared to the Northern Hemisphere and unique animals and seasons and plants and everything. So there really is tremendous diversity in Australia with those stories. What's your favorite as Aboriginal astronomy story? Like, what, what would be the one thing you'd tell everybody about Aboriginal way of seeing the stars? Oh, there's so many to choose from, but my favorite would be Narala. The story of Narala is that a group of women were dancing in the Milky Way as stars. One of the women carrying a baby put him in a turna, a wooden basket, and she went off to, to dance in the corroboree with the other women. Uh, the baby slipped off the Milky Way and fell to the earth and hit the ground, and where he hit the ground, he drove the rocks upward. And you can still see the turn in the sky as, as the constellation Corona Australis, which is this little curve of stars, meaning the southern crown. Um, and to this day, the baby's parents, the morning and the evening star, are still searching for the baby. But what I love about this story is, is not just the beauty of the story itself, but the fact that where the baby fell is actually a giant meteorite crater that's 142 million years old. 
So, you know, this is this link between those two I just find amazing. And I just can't get enough of those kinds of stories. Because I, of all of astronomy, I'm especially interested in the, in the meteorites and stuff like that. And there are all kinds of stories across Australia. And I just find that fascinating. If listeners would want to find more information about this kind of stuff or just learn more, where would they go? Well, we do have a blog. It's at aboriginalastronomy.blogspot.com.au. If you don't remember all that, just put in Aboriginal Astronomy blog in Google, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. Um, we have a Facebook page. We're on Twitter um, at Aboriginal Astro. If you just look up Aboriginal Astronomy or, or, or Aboriginal Astronomy at UNSW, Uni University of New South Wales, we have tons of stuff. We're building up a huge research group. We're teaching new courses, getting PhD students in. And by the way, we are looking for PhD students. So if you're interested in studying this for a career, we do have opportunities. Es sarunājos ar doktoru Hamakeru Nightworks pasākumā, kas ik gadu bandanonā pulcē interesents no tuvākās apkārtnes jaundienu dvelsā.